Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we have another box opening. This time it's not a battery powered Ryobi tool. This is the Ryobi BS904G 9 inch bandsaw. We're gonna open it up and try it out. Stay tuned. All right, welcome back. This one is exciting and a little bit intimidating, honestly. Not sure exactly what we're gonna think of this one. Looking at it in the store, the store model in the Home Depot, it um, feels a little cheap for a bandsaw. The, the platform and the table don't feel great. So excited, but also a little bit nervous on this one. Also, as you know, we are not experts. There are other guys on the channel that have a little bit more experience with bandsaws. Personally, it's been a long time since I've used a bandsaw. I am comfortable around a lot of saws, but the bandsaw is just not one that I have a lot of experience with. And again, it's been a long time since I've personally used one. So this will be fun. Uh, go ahead and stay tuned right along with us as we uh, try this one out. First off, like we always do, we're gonna go through a couple of specs. This is a corded tool, so it's the 120 volt, 60 hertz, 2.5 amp motor. The blade moves at 2500 FPM, no load. So that's gonna be good. I'm not, again, not familiar specifically with bandsaws, comment below, let us know if that's good. 2,500 FPM, no load. The throw capacity is nine inches, and that's actually what appealed us to this saw. We need a saw that can cut table legs. We actually bought a new table and need to cut the legs on the table. We'll show that here in a few minutes, but we needed some a big capacity. So the throat capacity, again, nine inches there. The maximum cutting height is only three and five eighths inches at 90 degrees. Blade length is 62 inches and the table size is 11 and three quarter inches square. So just under a foot square and the table tilts zero to 45 degrees. Included is the bandsaw BS904G, the miter gauge, the blade hex key, the saw table and hardware, switch key and operator's manual. I think that's all for the specs on the box. Let's go ahead and open this one up. Okay. First out of the box here, we have the table. There. It's got the uh, gears on the back or the ability to set it. So we'll move that out of the way. Go ahead and open it up. Operator's manual. There is a lock or the set, the keys, hex keys. Get the packing out of the way there. Yeah, the, it's like the next thing is the motor itself. This is the whole unit all in one. One big move there. The only thing left is our angle. We got that there, okay. That's it for the box. Everything else is foam. So we'll set that aside. Let's get started and make sure to comment below to let us know what I missed because I'm sure I'm going to miss some of the features on this one. Uh, again, just because it's been so long. So here's your lock so that releases the blade this determines if it's getting off the wheels you can realign that way and then our tension so first things first we've got it completely unplugged but the switch key here so this is our switch and switch key okay we'll move the switch key that is a very small key. So we're engaging tension. Okay, so we want to, we're gonna raise 
this up and we can pluck it. So you never want that completely depressed. Just checking that tension. Turn off the fan here, see if you can hear this. So again, adjusting. So that's a little, and then if we go more. Right about there. Check those wheels. Looks good. Again, you can adjust the tracking on the back. That will tilt this wheel back and forth so that as it spins, it becomes more aligned. So that is it for the inside. Go ahead and close that up. Uh, again, this adjusts the tension. This is the tension lock. This adjusts the tracking. It's tracking adjustment. This is your opening, adjust up and down. This is your lock. Down here, see we've got our power. We can go ahead and install our table. So this is our little lock. So we take the little wing nut off. This allows us to get the blade on. Put this on here. So this was one of the least stable things that we noticed at the store was this this little setup here. We'll put the blade lock back on. Front here. Here is the locking mechanism. right here screw that on so there's two as you can see this thing just wants to move all over the place and as you tighten it it seems to bend the table it pulls the table ski wampus I mean this is this is one of the biggest things about this table is it's supposed to be straight and flat and when you lock it into place so say you want to do an angle so you can angle it and that's decent but then you lock it into place and all of a sudden it tilts the table sideways don't love that at all but let's unlock it take it back to it's supposed to be flat it's supposed to be 45 and there's there's zero lock that in place now one other thing side here is our little gauge so we loosen this allow that to spin around and tell us where we're at so that's our little marker assuming this is zero tighten that into place again not sure how much we can trust the accuracy of this but again as you can see if we unlock here give it a tilt and this whole thing I mean you just see how and then when you lock it it just kind of leans in there's zero lock it down uh, exhaust port here so we can set up for shot back and power cord again the motor right here and then it the only thing left are the allen wrenches for adjusting any of these. It's actually not super complicated. We'll go ahead and get this mounted. All right guys, so we have it up on a uh, table saw. Just a little more sturdy than those plastic tables. Uh, we're just going to put these in here just to make sure that this doesn't go anywhere. Don't want any movement. Keep it safe. Now that that's not going anywhere, we can go ahead and bolt this down. All right guys, so what we've done now is grabbed a couple of bolts and washers from the Home Depot. We're gonna go ahead and send these bolts down through the bolt mounts. We'll go ahead and just mark the spots here where we're going to pre-drill or tap 
these. Now we'll go ahead and tap these. Okay. Down there. And go and set back up our table here. Got our bolts. Okay, now she's solid. Do the cord, have our plug right here. Again, we have our safety key, the little yellow key here. This goes in our side there, and it does snap in. Next up, we'll grab our safety glasses. Everything is on there. We'll go ahead and flip the switch. Pull this out. Okay, seems to be running. We'll go ahead and turn the switch off. Set that down. And we're gonna twang, so we've taken the key out. We're just gonna twang it. Make sure it's still good there. Set that down. We're gonna just double check our rotation. Looks like it is center on our wheel, so everything looks good there still. Plug that back in. Grab our wood. So we've just got a standard 2x4 here. We're going to use, again, as just a trial. Uh, we're going to go ahead and unlock that and raise this to maximum capacity, which will fit the 2x4 both directions. So we are going to try it both directions here. We'll go ahead and turn it back on. Okay. So first we're going to try it in the, uh, this mode here. Go ahead and just give it a nice easy push through. Just like that. Now we'll go ahead and try it top here. Sure, we've got a good piece. So again, just going straight through. Vacuum on. That's what the result looks like. Close. Definitely close. It's not square. As for this one, we're actually just going to trace on this block of wood here the air grip shape and then see if we can cut this out. So we're just going to trace around here and just like that. So we have our air grip shape. Now we're gonna start from this side and we're gonna take off the big chunks as we go. And here we go. Nice and soft. Again, we want it to do the work. Definitely been a while. Not exactly a great uh, representation. We could definitely uh, clean this up a little bit, but uh, obviously two by four isn't the best wood to use, but there's our little shape that we've done. All right, so first thoughts on this one, a lot less intimidating than I thought it would be. Honestly, it uh, isn't crazy power. It's not the best bandsaw you'll ever find, but it's pretty simple. Pretty straightforward. Uh, again, we're gonna have to play with this level because this is the table 
doesn't instill a whole bunch of confidence, especially if you had more pressure applied to it. Hopefully you're not putting you know big heavy stuff on there, but it is definitely maneuverable, easy to maneuver as we would expect with a bandsaw. It has the removable lock, which we love. It has a very decently length power cord, has the mounting into a table. It's very quiet, has the adjusting knobs that we would expect, and all in all seems like a pretty decent tool. Again, this isn't going to be for probably professionals. Again, we can't speak to that because we're not professionals. So if you are a professional and you use bandsaws, let us know what you think about this one. Comment below, let us know. Again, let us know what we missed on this tool, what we should have done better. We'll roll through some other footage of us actually cutting the table legs for our table and how that turned out. But otherwise, we're pretty excited to be able to do some cool small projects. I've personally always liked the bandsaw. Again, it's been a long time since I've had one and I'm excited to add this to my personal collection and try it out. So let us know what you want us to try and cut, what kind of woods, uh, what kind of objects or items. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, comment below to let us know what tool you want to see next. Put that on the edge. I'm on the edge of glory. Fashionably tuck that behind our ears there. So we'll go ahead and just mark. Woo, a lot of sawdust in there. Let's open it up. Not too bad.